Hello and welcome to my corner of the internet. It's Dark Bloom, and today we're going to be talking about Remnant 2. Remnant 2 is an uh, upcoming third person shooter. It's an action RPG. It's developed by Gunfire Games. It is a follow up to the first game, Remnant from the Ashes, which I personally loved. And uh, yeah, I've gotten my hands on it. I played a good bit of it, and I'm ready to talk about it. So right out the gate, if you're a fan of Remnant 1, uh, Remnant from the Ashes, you're going to like this game. This game is everything Remnant 1 is, but better. The mechanics are more uh, fleshed out, the UI is easier to understand, the gameplay is more refined. Uh, there's so much like quality of life to this game compared to the first one. Like, gameplay-wise and mechanically, that is just... If you love the first one, you're going to love this. It's as simple as that. They did a really good job with Remnant 2. If you never played Remnant, then yeah, I think you're going to like this as well. Newcomers are going to find their way, and they're going to enjoy the game. And probably get as hooked as Remnant 1 players did when they played the first game. It is just addictive gameplay. From the level designs, to the way the gameplay loop is set up, to the fights, the boss fights, the uh, co-op. It's just wonderfully laid out. I think newcomers are going to have a wonderful time. You don't have to play the first game to get this game. It's okay. You can just jump right into Remnant 2 and start getting your ass kicked. It's going to be a good time. So, yeah, newcomers, yeah, you're good too. Don't worry about it. Remnant from the Ashes is it, not that old either. The original game was released in 2019, and it quickly gained a following and fans due to, like, its tight difficulty, its fun gunplay, and the uh, way it has its dungeons and, like, procedurally generated areas set up it, it, it captivated players including myself remnant 1 did very well and, and it even got really good reviews and remnant 2 is getting good reviews as well but there is some butts to that and if you're on pc there's a big butt the performance on pc is kind of dog shit so i'll start playing and i'll have like 20 fps and i'm sitting there baffled but zoogled that the fact that I'm getting 20 FPS on this game that's supposed to be in Unreal 5 and Unreal 5 taunted their performance, but no, it's not here. The performance is just... <laughs> now, I wanted to clarify and just say it's more of an optimization issue rather than glitches and bugs and stuff like that. Like, I haven't had any bugs or glitches or anything like that. It's literally just been massive frame drops and uh, stuttering and stuff like that. The actual game itself is very well made, like no bugs and no glitches really. It's really well refined, honestly. The PC performance though is a big fucking issue right now. There is just floods of complaints in the discussion section, floods of complaints on Reddit. It, it's a massive issue that Gunfire Games is going to have to figure out come day one because <laughs> if it plays like this after day one, those uh, positive reviews are going to go down real quick. Alright, now that we got the big con out of the way, let's dive into what I actually like about the game, what the gameplay is like, what the graphics look like, and uh, everything else, the story and all that, let's get into it. Now for me, the story is pretty fucking weak. It's very clear the gameplay is what the focus of this game is. It's very clear that the story is just there to be a story. Yeah, it does tell a coherent story, but it's not very interesting. It's kind of on the weak side. But that being said, the whole focus of the game is clearly the gameplay, and the gameplay does make up for that lack of story. It would have been nice to have a little bit better narrative, but I'll take it. It's like it's nowhere near Dark Souls storytelling level, not by a long shot. But it has something there to uh, be a substance for someone that does care a little bit about the story. Now, aside from the performance issues, this game does look very good. The environments are beautiful looking, the enemies are kind of terrifying at times, and the overall like models of the characters, they're not bad, they look pretty decent. But what really captures me in this game is the environment design. I absolutely love the way the environments look in this game. It's just a fantastic all around job on the design on these environments. The gunplay is as addictive as always in the Remnant games, it is fantastic, it's so tight, satisfying. Each gun has their own little mechanics working with them. Uh, you can tell they went in and perfected their weapons from the first game. It, it, the gunplay is very smooth. I'm very pleased with it. It makes me happy. Lots of customization options in terms of like gun mods, traits, which is like perks for your character, uh, 
relics, which is goes on your uh, dragon heart, can give you more stats boosts depending on what you put in there, stuff like that. So there's ways to get your character up there in power level. The difficulty is right on point for Remnant. It is hard, but fair. So just like Dark Souls. This is a Souls-like inspired game. They did get their inspiration from Dark Souls in terms of the difficulty and like the boss gauntlet layout kind of thing. So this is a Souls inspired game, but it plays massively different from most other Souls inspired games. Now, unlike most other Souls-like games, this game has difficulty options. However, most of them are hard. Well, not most of them. All of them are hard. Just Survivor's easier. But, yeah, unlike most other Souls-inspired games, it has difficulty options. Pretty neat. And it's just a blast. It's so satisfying to kill a boss after the boss smacked you like eight times. You know, that, that typical dopamine hit when you kill a boss in a Souls-like game, you know? It, it feels good. It feels very good. Each world has a fair set of enemy varieties. You can tell each like world has their own sets of enemies, but the variety of those sets does vary. You'll run into different enemies throughout the dungeon. As you get deeper into it, you'll run into different types of enemies. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the enemy variation so far. Uh, I do feel like they'll probably add more or whatever down the road. But right now, I'm pretty happy with it. I feel like the enemies, they have variety. It's, it's nice. So right there, are is my general thoughts on the game like summarized so now we'll dive into what the game offers and stuff like that like what classes you can pick what weapons and play styles there are and yeah let's dive into that next starting out there's four classes five if you pre-ordered all right we're gonna start with the handler here the handler you have a companion the companion can revive the challenger is close quarter combat shotgun melee you know those kind of things can take a hit more of your tankier kind of build Hunter, more of your long range kind of build. Kind of like the gunslinger, but not as fast paced with the guns. And we got the medic here, which is the co-op stream. He gets the job done for your teammates and yourself. And then we got the gunslinger. This is a pre-order bonus, but you can unlock him later in the game. This is the one I'm using currently as a main. And I love it, I ain't gonna lie. Gunslinger is my favorite so far. I'm gonna try the handler next though. But yeah, these are the classes. There are subclasses later in the game that unlock like a dual set, but I'm not going to spoil that for you guys. And as I mentioned earlier, there's difficulties. You got Survivor here, and this is the most basic, Veteran, and Nightmare. There are XP differences. You get more XP the higher you go, Nightmare being the hardest so far. Apocalypse is locked. I don't know if you get that after the campaign, but it's locked at the start. So yeah, those are the difficulties. If you're a Remnant 1 player, you know for a fact there's going to be a trait system. So this is how it works. It's kind of like a perk perk card system. You get trait points throughout the level, both in campaign and adventure mode. You use those trait points to level up. Each one does something different, like Vigor is here to show your health. Endurance is stamina. You unlock more trait cards as you're playing, so the ones you get to start isn't what you're with throughout the whole game. You get more as you go. So yeah. And then here you got your classes, you can change out your class ability, you got your subclass, which I'm not going to show you what you get when you unlock, that's going to be for when you play, but you can pick a different class halfway through. And yeah, that's pretty much how the class system works in Remnant 2, a little bit more complex, I like it actually, makes the game way more enjoyable. You'll notice I said adventure mode and campaign, so yeah, let's discuss what that is. Campaign is the main story, this is... What you do at first, you have to complete a world to unlock it in adventure mode. But the campaign is the main story, will run you through the objectives, then yeah, you unlock the levels as you go. I haven't gotten them all yet, but this is uh, what it's looking like. And the adventure mode will let you go back and replay a level, and let you go deeper into the level to get what you miss, as well as change the things up a bit for you, so it's not always the same. The co-op is amazing in this game. You click join game. You can join a bunch of games that pop up on your screen. If none of these satisfy you, you can back out and rejoin it. Or you can simply just click quick match here and get into one right away. You got your campaign and adventure mode here. You got your difficulties at the top. Adventure mode I've been playing Nightmare. And the campaign I've been doing Veteran because I don't want to re-roll it. But yeah, those are adventure and campaign modes. Now I actually really enjoy the co-op in Remnant 2. A lot more than I did in Remnant 1. The, the whole system seems so seamless. If you want to hop in co-op, you can right away. If you want to host one and keep your game open for the public, 9 times out of 10, you're going to get someone joining you within 10 minutes. Even in early access, what I'm playing right now. So it's probably just going to be even faster on the actual release. But co-op is so smooth in this game. I love it. 
It's also worth mentioning the base game is only $50 so the devs are only charging $50 for this experience and it's probably one of the most fun times I've had in the game all year. So yeah that's kind of a W. I, I like the $50 price tag on this game. I think that was a smart move and hopefully it pulls in more players. Do I recommend Remnant 2? Yeah, I do honestly. Even if you're not a fan of the hardcore Dark Souls kind of game, I still recommend this. This game offers a really good challenge with high quality gunplay and gameplay and addictive uh, RPG and action RPG mechanics. So it, it's it's a nice game and I do recommend it. If, uh, if you're looking for something fun, yeah. This is it, especially co-op wise. For a co-op game, yeah, for sure recommend it. This game is so much fun, even with randoms. So yeah, if you guys liked what you saw here, go ahead and slap me a like on this video. It helps out so much. Give me a subscribe and yeah, there'll be more Remnant 2 content coming in the future. See you guys next time. Take care.